they say what's old is new again, but what never goes out of style is heroism. Classic heroism that has been with us since the dawn of storytelling itself. People who put others before themselves in order to protect their safety and dignity at the cost of even their own life sometimes. In the old days, we had things like uh, the uh, Homer's Odyssey, the Iliad, uh, Robin Hood, King Arthur, stuff that spans back hundreds of years. But what do we have these days? We have the modern mythology, superheroes, comic books, characters who are as timeless as they are interesting. But every popular thing has its phase where inevitably people start to ask too many questions and thus you get the deconstruction. And we're kind of going, I would say we're going through that right now, but the truth is we've been going through superhero deconstruction since the 80s. The comic book industry had Watchmen land on it like a bomb, and it may be one of the most well-written and well-done deconstructions of the superhero genre to date. And comic book writers have been sucking its dick ever since. If you weren't around for the 90s, let me regale you with the times of the before era. I admit fully that as timeless as heroism is, uh, there was a period through the 90s where the classic hero was starting to come across as a little bit hokey, a little bit cornball. Uh, people were kind of craving something new, and it was the contrast of the dark, gritty hero that popped up in its place and dominated the 90s. You could not turn around in the 90s and not find some hero, even our classic ones, dark, brooding, gritty, growling in the uh, darkness as they contemplated the, uh, the dourness of their lives. You had anti-heroes who were borderline supervillains in their own right. Spawn uh, popped up. It was always more of a pinup character to me than a uh, fun to read superhero. Image Comics was loaded with these guys. Everyone got a dark and gritty makeover in the 90s. Guys like Venom, an edgelord version of Spider-Man, and his even edgier edgelord version, Carnage. You couldn't turn around without finding these guys all over the place. Venom was huge in the 90s. There was a brief period where Captain America's shield drank blood. I kid you not. And whatever the hell this was, whatever they were doing with Wolverine. And in a lot of ways, we never moved on from the 90s. Its deconstruction, dark, gritty era just kind of stuck around and became part of the uh, permanent tapestry of, uh, of superheroes in general. You've had some of the darkest, bleakest stuff that's popped up in the, uh, in the 2000s. Things like uh, Identity Crisis and the events that followed that. Death and destruction. It's just awful. These people do not always come across as superheroes. Even in dark times, they should be holding true to their values. That's what makes a hero timeless. That's what makes a hero archetype the kind of thing we should want to aspire towards. I couldn't expound on why we need heroes better than the Critical Drinker did in his video, Why We Need Heroes. And I'll leave a link to that uh, video in the description for you to watch. I highly recommend it. But here we are today. And what's been popular these days has been mostly the deconstruction of the Superman archetype. You can't turn a corner without bumping into another what if Superman but evil type. Omni-Man, The Boys, Bright Barn. Hell, even Superman himself gets this treatment. His most popular starring role in uh, games in the last decade has been in games where he's been an evil fascist dictator. Fun times. The worst example of this is The Boys, the one that annoys me the most. It's presented itself as a black comedy, a dark satire of what if superheroes were celebrities who uh, had superpowers. Believe me, looking at the uh, lineup of celebrities we have in Hollywood now, those are the last people in the world who need to have the ability to be a walking god. Now, I was done with The Boys during season two, around the time that a guy got choked out by a 20 foot long prehensile dick but even if I had stuck through it and come through to season 3 uh, there was a recent scene where obviously a parody of one of the best pages of Superman ever written where he talks a young girl off of a ledge to keep her from jumping it is the true the truest form of Superman's character is this selflessness 
this hopefulness and his willingness rather than just to uh, swoop down and punch something but to be a hero that somebody needs in a way that doesn't always necessarily involve violence and what does the boys do I'm not going to show the clip but it's a very it's the exact same scenario but instead of uh, talking her down the character of Homelander talks the girl into going the opposite route and then well I won't say needless to say I don't know why this is called a bleak dark comedy because a bleak dark comedy is in some ways funny there's some attempt at humor there's some attempt to at true satirization this is just a uh, pure deconstruction of heroes in general of the Superman archetype in particular and I don't like it and I never have we have another one uh, rearing up its its head, which is Black Adam, uh, starring The Rock, which, boy, did you wait a little too long to get this project off the ground. Coming in at the tail end of the superhero uh, movie craze and presenting yet another uh, evil Superman trope. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. Yes, I know Black Adam is not traditionally a hero. He's always been either a villain or, at best, uh, somewhat of a Doctor Doom-style anti-hero who's benevolent to the people that are around him. But if you watch the trailer, really it's coming across as uh, another evil Superman. Even Superman himself isn't safe from this. If you watched Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman, uh, both of those movies had just uh, terrible representations of Superman himself and his uh, traditional character. Uh, all of it in the service of, look, Superman can punch people now and go flying through buildings in a Dragon Ball Z-style fight uh, with another CGI villain. And it just doesn't work. It, it makes uh, there's so many decisions in Man of Steel that make Superman seem like a callous, uncaring uh, individual. He should have had those values instilled within him from the very start, and he didn't. And that was a mistake on Zack Snyder's part. Trope. And it's just it's old. It's getting old. Don't deconstruct your heroes. The problem is the deconstruction phase of superheroes has been with us for so long. It's a deconstruction phase should be uh, just that a phase, but it's been with us so long it's starting to become the norm, and that's bad. We need heroes. We need larger than life ca uh, characters that we can look up to, that we can aspire to uh, be towards. We don't need people like us because we're assholes and I don't want uh, comic books about assholes treating other assholes like assholes I don't know about you but I don't want to live in Portland I'm John A. Douglas and remember reject the mainstream embrace the independent and be heroic